One spring, Juicy King, looking forward to, looking forward to, the east wind is coming, and the footsteps of spring are near. Everything was as if he had just woken up, and he opened his eyes happily. The mountains are moistened, and the waters are rising. The sun's face turned red and the grass crept out of the soil, tender and green, in the garden, in the field. Behold, there are a lot of them, sitting, lying down, playing to rows, kicking a few kicks, race a few runs, catch a few rounds of hide and seek. The wind was soft and the grass was soft, peach trees, apricot trees, pear trees, you don't let me, I don't let you, they are all full of flowers, the red ones are like fire, the pink ones are like the glow, and the white ones are like snow, the flowers were sweetened and their eyes were closed, and the trees seemed to be full of peaches, apricots, and pears. Hundreds of bees buzzed under the flowers, and butterflies of all sizes flew around. Wild flowers are everywhere, miscellaneous, named. The nameless ones were scattered in the grass, like eyes, like stars, and blinking. Blowing the face does not chill the willow wind. Good. Like a mother's hand caressing you, the wind brings the smell of freshly turned earth, mixed with the smell of grass. There are also the fragrances of various flowers brewing in the slightly moist air. The birds set their nests in the flowers and leaves, and rejoiced and sang a tune with their crisp throats. The piccolo of the shepherd boy on the back of the cow with the breeze and the water is also ringing loudly all day long. Rain is the most common. Three or two days at a time. Don't be annoyed. Look. Like cow's hair. Like a needle. Like a filament. Densely diagonally weaved. A thin layer of smoke was enveloped on the roofs of people's houses. The leaves of the trees are green and shiny, and the grass is so green that your eyes are strong. In the evening, the lights are on, a little yellow light. It is a quiet and peaceful night country. On the path, by the stone bridge, People holding up umbrellas and walking slowly, and farmers working in the fields, wearing scarves and hats, their houses, sparsely sparse. Silent in the rain there are more kites in the sky, and there are more children on the ground, in the city and the countryside. Every family, old and young, they also rushed out, one by one, relax the muscles and bones, shake the spirit, do your own thing. The plan of the year lies in the spring. At the beginning, some are labor, and some are hope. Spring is like a doll that has just landed, new from head to toe, and he grows. Spring is like a little girl with flowers, smiling and walking, spring, like a sturdy young man, with iron arms and feet, led us forward, to, winter in Jinan, Laoshi, for a person like me who is used to living in Baiping, if there is no wind in winter, it is a miracle, and there is no wind in Jinan, for someone who has just returned from London, like me. In winter, it is strange to be able to see the sun, and the winter in Jinan is clear, naturally. 
In tropical places, daylight is always so poisonous, and the loud weather is a bit frightening, but in the winter of northern China, with warm and sunny weather, Jinan is really a treasure. If there is only sunshine, it is not surprising. Please close your eyes and think. An old city with mountains and water. Is it an ideal realm to sleep warmly and comfortably in the sun under the sky? Just waiting for the spring breeze to wake them up. The hill encircles Jinan in a circle, and only the north side lacks a little mouth. This circle of hills is particularly lovely in winter, as if Jinan is placed in a small cradle, and they quietly whisper, Don't worry, it's safe here, it's true. The people of Jinan are smiling in winter, and when they look at those hills, they feel that they have settled and relied on. When they saw the mountain from heaven, they unconsciously remembered. Tomorrow may be spring. Isn't it so warm? The grass may be green tonight. Because of such a charitable winter, why hope for anything else? The best part is that there is a little snow, behold. The dwarf pines on the hill are becoming more and more blue and black, and the tips of the trees are crowned with a bun of white flowers for. It seems that the tip of the mountain of the Japanese nurse is completely white, and the blue sky is inlaid with a silver edge on the slopes. The snow is thicker in some places, and the grass is still exposed in other places. Put on a flower dress with water patterns for the mountains and look at it. This flower dress seems to be blown by the wind, so that you want to see a little more beautiful mountain skin when it's about to fall back. The yellowish sunlight slanted on the mountainside, and the thin snow seemed to suddenly be shy, revealing a little pink. It's a little snow. Jinan can't stand the heavy snow. Those hills are too delicate. Ancient Jinan. The city is so narrow and so spacious outside. There are some small villages lying on the hillside. And there is a little snow on the roofs of the small villages. And what about the water? Not only did it not freeze, but it was steaming a little on the green weed six. And the algae were really green, taking out all the green stored all the year round. The clearer the day, the greener the algae. And with these green spirits, the water can't bear to freeze. Besides, those weeping willows with long branches should still take a shadow in the water and look up slowly from the clear river, in the air, in mid-air, in the sky, from top to bottom, all so clear, so blue. The whole thing is an ethereal piece of blue crystal. Wrapped in a red roof, Huangke Mountain, like a small gray tree shadow on the carpet. 3. From the Hundred Herb Garden to the Three Flavors Study. Luzan, there is a big garden behind my house, which is called Baikao Garden. Now it has been sold to the descendants of Zhu Wenggong together with the house and even the last meeting has been separated by seven or eight years. It seemed like there were only a few weeks, but it was my paradise at that time. It is not necessary to say that the green vegetable furrow, the smooth stone wheelbar, 
the tall honey locust tree, the purple and red mulberry, and the cicadas singing in the leaves. The fat wasp crouched on the cauliflower, and the sun of heaven suddenly rushed from the grass to the sky. The short mud walls around it alone are infinitely interesting. Lace wings sing low here. Here crickets play the harp and flip over broken bricks. Sometimes encounter centipedes and cantharids, which, if you press your fingers down on their backs, will snap and puff of smoke from their back holes. Hishu Wu vine and Mulian vine are entwined with the lotus lotus like fruit. And Hishu Wu has bloated roots. Some people say that Hishu Wagon has a humanoid shape. And if you eat it, you can become an immortal. So I often pull it up. The mud wall has been damaged because of the continuous uprooting. But I have never seen a piece of it look like a human. If you are not afraid of thorns, you can also pick raspberries, like small balls of small coral bees, sour and sweet. The color and taste are far better than the mulberries the long grass does not go. Because according to legend, there is a big red snake in this garden. My eldest mother once told me a story. Before, there was a scholar who lived in an ancient temple and worked hard at night. And when he was enjoying the cool in the courtyard, he suddenly heard someone calling him, promised. And when he looked around, he saw a beautiful woman's face exposed on the wall, and smiled at him. He was glad to have hidden, but he had made sense of the mechanism for the old monk who had come to talk all night, said that he had some demonic spirit on his face, and he must have met a beautiful snake. This is a monster with a human head and a snake body, and can call people's names. He was naturally frightened to death when he came to eat this man's flesh at night. But the old monk said that it was okay, and gave him a small box, saying that as long as he put it next to his pillow, he could lie down on his pillow. And though he did the same, he could not sleep. Of course, he couldn't sleep until midnight. And sure enough, it came, rustling. Outside the door was like the sound of wind and rain. And when he was shaking, he heard a loud sound, and a golden light flew out of the pillow and there was no sound outside. The golden light flew back and was in the box. Later, the old monk said that this was a flying centipede, and it could suck the brain marrow of a snake, and the beautiful snake was killed by it. The final lesson is, therefore, if a strange voice calls your name, do not answer him. This story makes me feel very risky to be a man. And I am often a little worried about the cool summer night. And I dare not look at the wall. And when he desperately wanted to get a box of flying centipedes like the old monk, he often thought so when he walked next to the grass in the Baikal garden. But until now, I haven't gotten it, but I haven't met the red snake and the beautiful snake. The unfamiliar voice calling my name is of course common, but it is not a beautiful snake. In winter, the herb garden is relatively tasteless, and when it snows, it is different.
Should snowmen and sculpt snow or hats needs to be appreciated. This is a deserted garden, so it is not suitable. So I have to come to hunt birds, then snow is not enough. It must be covered with snow for a day or two, and the birds and finches have nowhere to feed for a long time. Sweep away a piece of snow. Expose the ground with a short stick to support a large bamboo sieve. Sprinkle some grain below. Tie a long rope on the stick. People hold it from a distance. Watch the birds and birds come down to pack. When you go to the bottom of the bamboo sieve, pull the rope. It covered it. But what I got was mostly sparrows, and there were also white-cheeked chamfinio, who were very irritable and couldn't raise them overnight. This is the method taught by the father of the leopards, but I am not very good at using it. Seeing them going, I pulled the rope and ran to take a look, but there was nothing. And it took a long time to catch only three or four. The father of Rantu was able to catch dozens of them in half a day, and they were loaded in a fork bag and screened and hit. I once asked him the reason for his gains and losses, and he only smiled quietly. You are too anxious to wait for it to go to the middle. I don't know why my family sent me to school, and it is also the most severe school in the city. Maybe because he should would destroy the mud wall. Maybe because he threw bricks to the Lian family in the wall. Maybe it's because I jumped off the stone railing, and I don't know. In short. I won't be able to go to the herb garden very often. Aid my crickets. Aid my raspberries and lotus. Not half a mile to the east, across a stone bridge, is my husband's home. Entering through a black bamboo door, the third room is a study. There is a plaque hanging in the middle. Sanwei study. And below the plaque is a painting. There was a picture of a very fat seeker deer lying under the ancient tree, and there was no Confucius tablet. So we saluted the plaque and the deer. The first time is considered to worship Confucius, and the second time is to worship Mister at the second prostration. The gentleman kindly replied that he was a tall, thin old man with gray hair and big glasses. I was very respectful to him, for I had heard that he was the most square, simple, and learned man in the city. I don't know where I heard Dong Feng Shuo is also very knowledgeable. He knows a kind of worm. Called weird, the grievance is dissolved with a drink poured on it. It will be dissolved. I'd love to know this story in detail, but Ah Chen doesn't know because she is not knowledgeable after all. Now that she has a chance, she can ask Sir, Sir, what's the matter with this weird worm? I asked hurriedly when I was about to retire. I don't know. He seemed upset and angry. I just learned that as a student, you shouldn't ask about these things, as long as you study, because he is a profound Confucian, and he will never know it. I don't want to say that people are older than me. And that's often the case, and I've met them several times. I only read, practice calligraphy at noon, and teach in the evening. 
My husband was very strict with me in the first few days, but then he got better. However, the books I read gradually increased, and the words gradually added to the lessons, from three words to five words, and finally to seven words. There is also a garden behind the Sanway Book House, although it is small. But there, you can also climb the flower bed to fold wax plum blossoms, and look for cicadas on the ground or asmanthus trees. The best job is to catch flies and feed the ants, quietly without sound. However, too many classmates came to the garden. After too long, the gentleman cried out in the study. Everyone has gone there, and the people went back one by one, and they could not go back together. He had a ruler, but he didn't use it often. There are also rules for punishing kneeling, but they are not commonly used. And ordinary people just stare at them a few times and say loudly, "Read." So everyone opened their throats and read for a while, which was really loud. There are those who read, "Benevolence is far away. I want to be benevolent." There are those who think of laughing and laughing and saying that the dog's sinus is wide open. There are those who read, "Don't use the nine hidden dragons." And there are those who read the staggered tribute about grass and orange grapefruit under the soil. The gentleman himself also studied. Then our voices were lowered and quiet. Only he read aloud Tyrui. The conductor is dignified, and everyone is shocked when he sits. And Kimporo. Upside down and dripping, a thousand cups are not drunk. I suspect that this is an excellent article, because he always smiles when he reads this, and he threw his head up and shook it, and threw it back, and pushed it over. When Mister Reese and is in the mind, it is very suitable for us. A few of them used paper and armor to put on their nails. I'm a painter, with a kind of paper called jinquan paper. It is traced one by one on the embroidered image of the novel, like the shadow writing. When learning characters, I read more books, and I painted more pictures. I didn't finish reading books. But I got a lot of results in painting. The most fragmented is that there is a large number of embroidered portraits of wandering Kuji and journey to the west. Later, in order to use it for money, he sold it to a rich classmate. His father was a tin foil shop. I heard that now I have become a shopkeeper and am about to rise to the status of a gentleman. It's long gone. September eighteenth, four. Helen Keller, the day my teacher, and Sullivan, came to my house was the most important day of my life. It was March third, eighteen eighty-seven. When I was six years and nine months old, I can't help but sigh when I think back on the very different life I had before and after that. That afternoon, I stood silently in the hallway. From the mother's gesture and the hurried appearance of the family, guessing that something unusual was about to happen. I quietly walked to the door and stood on the steps and waited. The afternoon sun shines through the honeysuckle leaves that cover the balcony and onto my upturned face. 
My fingers rubbed the leaves and caressed the flowers that bloomed for spring in the south. I didn't know what miracles were going to happen in the future. And I was at that time. After weeks of anger and distress, tired friend, have you ever sailed in the fog? And in the fog you have nervously steered a great boat, carefully and slowly toward the other side, lest the accident happen before I was educated. I was like a ship in a fog, with neither a compass nor a sounder and no way of knowing that the harbor was very close, I silently cried out in my heart, Light, give me light at this time, and the light of love shines on me. I felt footsteps coming towards me, and I thought it was my mother, and I immediately stretched out my hands, a man took my hand holding me tightly in my arms. I could feel that she was the one who had come to reveal the truth of the world to me and to give me deep love. Teacher and Sullivan, the next morning, Teacher Sullivan took me to her room and gave me a doll, and I later found out that it was a gift from a student at Perkins who entered the school for the blind. The clothes were sewn by the hands of the elderly Lola. I played with it for a while. Miss Doll Miss Sullivan took my hand and slowly spelled the word doll on the palm of my hand. This action made me interested in finger games and imitated the drawing on her hand when I was finally able to spell the word correctly. I was so proud that my face turned red with joy, and I immediately ran downstairs to find my mother and spell it to her. I didn't know it was writing, and I didn't even know there was such a thing as writing in the world. I'm just drawing a gourd and imitating Teacher Sullivan's movements, from now on. In this way, I learned to spell the words pin, cup, and sit, stand, and walk. Everything in the world has its own name. And it was only after the teacher taught me for a few weeks that I realized it. One day, Miss Sullivan gave me a new, bigger doll. At the same time, he took the old rag doll and put it on my lap and spelled the word doll on my hand, with the intention of telling me that this big rag doll is called the same as the small rag doll. Doll this morning, Miss Sullivan and I had an argument over the words cup and water. She wanted me to understand that cup is cup and water is water. But I confused the two. Cup is also water and water is also cup. She had no choice but to put the issue aside for a moment and re-practice the word doll for rag dolls. I got a little impatient, grabbed the new doll and threw it on the ground and broke it to pieces. I feel very happy to have this temper in my heart, and I am neither ashamed nor remorseful. I have no love for the doll. In my still, dark world, there would be no tenderness and compassion at all. Miss Sullivan swept the poor doll's racks to the stove and handed me my hat and I knew I could go outside in the warm sunshine again. We walked along the path to the warehouse. The honeysuckle blooming on the roof was fragrant, and Miss Sullivan put one of my hands under the spout, and a stream of cool water flowed through my hand. She spelled water water on my other hand. The words were written slowly at first, 
and then faster the second time. I stood quietly, noticing the movement of her fingers. Suddenly, it dawned on me that a magical sensation was stirring through my brain. I immediately understood the mystery of language and writing, and I knew that the word water was this cool and wonderful thing that flowed through my hands. Water awakens my soul and gives me light, hope, happiness and freedom. The experience in the warehouse made me want to learn. It turns out that everything in the universe has its own name, and each name can inspire me to think newly. I began to look at everything with a new eye and came back into the house, and everything I touched seemed to come to life. I remembered the doll I had broken, and groped my way to the stove. I picked up the pieces and tried to put them together, but I couldn't put them together. Remembering what I had just done, I felt so remorseful that my eyes were filled with tears for the first time in my life. That day, I learned a lot of words. For example, father, mother, sister, teacher. Etc. These words made the whole world bloom in front of me. I remember that beautiful night, lying alone in bed, my heart full of joy, looking forward to a new day soon. Yes, is there a happier child in the world than I am? Five, the shepherd who planted the tree, Jean Jono, to really understand a person. You have to observe what he does for a long time. If he is generous and selfless, and does not seek anything in return, he also left a lot of things in the world. So it's safe to say that this is a real good person. It was in 1913 that I went into the province region of France. In the sparsely populated Alps, I made a trip here at an altitude of 12,300 meters, and as far as the eye can see, there is wasteland everywhere. On the bare hills, there are some wild lavender growing in a sparse place in the boundless wilderness. I walked for three days and finally came to an abandoned village. I pitched my tent next to the collapsed house. Since the night before, there has been no water to drink. Now, I have to get some water. I guess it was in ruins, but there was always a well or a spring around the houses, like a hornet's nest. I did find a spring, but it had dried up. There are five or six roofless houses here that are left to the wind and rain. There is also a church next to it, and the bell tower has also collapsed. All this makes one imagine what it was like for people to live here at that time. Now. But I didn't get angry at all. It was a sunny day in June, and the sun was about to scorch people on the unobstructed high ground. The wind blew people to stagger. The wind howls through the cracks of the broken house, roaring like a hungry beast. I dismissed the idea of spending the night here. After five hours of walking, I still didn't find water, and I didn't even have the slightest hope. Everywhere there was dry land and weeds, and I saw a figure in the distance. At first, I thought it was a dead tree, but I didn't have a choice, so I walked there anyway. It turned out to be a shepherd. Round him, 
There were about thirty sheep lying lazily on the hot mountain ground. The shepherd gave me water from the cattle and took me to his hut on the mountain. He drew me some water from a deep well. On the well platform where the well water is sweet, there is a simple hanging rope. This man is not very talkative, as is often the case with people who live alone. However, he appeared confident and peaceful in my eyes. He's like a mysterious spring gushing out of this barren land, and he doesn't live in tents, but in a sturdy stone house. It can be seen that, little by little, he repaired a dilapidated house to its current state, with a roof that was tight and did not leak a drop of rainwater. The wind blows on the tiles and makes the sound of waves crashing on the beach. The room was neatly tidy. The dishes were clean. There was not a single dust on the floor, and the shotguns were oiled on the stove. There is also a pot of hot soup. You can tell he's just shaved. The buttons of his clothes were sewn so tightly that the stitches of the patches were so thin that they were barely visible. We drank hot soup together. After the meal, I tried to hand him the cigarette pouch, but he replied that he did not smoke. His big dog is also as quiet, loyal, and unassuming as his owner. The shepherd took out a bag, poured out a pile of acorns from it, and scattered it on the table. Then, carefully pick them one by one. He's going to separate the good acorns from the bad ones, and I'm smoking a cigarette and trying to pick them for him. But he said he didn't need my help. Seeing that he picked so seriously and carefully, I stopped insisting. That's all we had to talk about after a while, and he picked out a small pile of good acorns, each one full. Then he divided them in piles of ten. As he counted, he put the little ones, or the cracked ones, were picked out. And at last, a hundred big and good acorns were picked out, and he stopped, and we went to sleep. Staying with the shepherds is very calming. The next day, I offered to him to stay in his house for another day, not because I needed a rest, but because I was curious to know more about the shepherds. And he readily agreed. I feel nothing could disrupt his life, and he was going to graze with the sheep before leaving. He soaked the bag with acorns in the water. I saw that he did not bring a stick. Instead, he took an iron rod, one and a half meters long, and the thickness of his thumb. I pretended to wander around casually and walked on the mountain road parallel to him. The place where the sheep graze is in a mountain nest. The shepherd made the big dog watch over the flock. Then he crawled to where I was standing, and I thought he was going to come to me, and I thought I had been following him, but he didn't. This was the path he was going to take. He also said that if I was okay, I could go with him. We climbed another two hundred meters along the mountain road. He stopped and poked a hole in the ground with an iron rod. Then he gently placed an acorn into the pit and carefully covered it with dirt. He's planting oak trees. And I asked him, "Is this land yours?" He shook his head and said, 
know whose land is that? Is it public or private? He said he didn't know. It doesn't seem like he cares. He just planted a hundred acorns single-mindedly. And after lunch, he started to choose acorns again, taking advantage of this opportunity. I got to the bottom of it, and only then did I learn something from him. For three years, he has always planted trees like this, and he has planted 100,000 acorns. Of these 100,000 acorns, 20,000 sprouted, and of the 20,000 saplings, nearly half of them may be bitten by animals, or the remaining 10,000 saplings that have died for other reasons will take root in this bare land and grow into big trees. Hearing this, I began to wonder how old the shepherds were. He looked to be in his fifties. He said he was 55 years old. His name was Elisa Buffy. And he used to live at the foot of the mountain and had his own farm. However, he first lost his only son. And then his wife died. He chose to live alone. Be in the company of sheep and dogs and watch the days go by calmly. He said that there was a lack of trees in this place, and that without trees there would be no life. He decided that since he had nothing important to do, he would plant trees. On the third day I said goodbye to the shepherds. A year later, World War I broke out. I enlisted in the army and spent five years in the army. The war was over, and I was paid a small fee. I really wanted to breathe in the pure air, and I couldn't help but set foot on the road to that plateau again. At first glance, this area does not seem to have changed much, but when I came to the abandoned village, looking into the distance, I saw a gray mist like a carpet, spread over the plateau, since last night, I have been reminded of the shepherd who planted the trees, I think, those 10,000 oak trees must have grown into a large forest, and the shepherd is still alive, and his body is still strong, now, he no longer herds sheep, he said, when the sheep eat the sapling, they will not raise the sheep, leaving only for use. He bought more than 100 beehives and switched to bees. The war did not disturb his life. He has been planting trees, oak trees, beech trees, and birch trees. The oak tree planted in 1910 has grown taller than me. And I can't believe it. I was speechless in astonishment. He was still so silent, and so we were quiet. In the forest he planted. After wandering around all day the forest is divided into three large sections. The largest of which is 11 kilometers wide. When I think that everything in front of me does not rely on some advanced technology, it was through the hands and perseverance of one person that I realized that in addition to destruction, human beings can also be created like God. The man insisted on doing what he wanted. This grove of beech trees as far as the eye can see is proof that they are as tall as my shoulders. That large expanse of oak trees also grew luxuriantly. And there was no need to worry about being eaten by animals. Even if God wanted to destroy this masterpiece, 
he would have to turn to tornado. He also pointed to a birch forest and said it was planted five years ago. He thought the valley bottom was wet, so he planted birch trees there. He was right. These birch trees were fresh and straight, like teenagers standing upright. As I passed by the village down the mountain, I saw a stream in this once arid place. This is the knock-on effect of the old man planting trees, and it is the greatest miracle I have ever seen. Beginning in 1920, I visited the old man who planted the tree almost every year. I've never seen him doubt or waver in any way. Only God knows how hard it is. In June 1945, I saw the old man planting trees for the last time. He was 87 years old. I set out again on this path to the wasteland, and I don't recognize the path I once walked at all. Everything has changed. Even the air is different, the fierce and dry wind that used to be. It turned into a scented breeze and the sound of running water came from above. The sound of the wind passing through the trees. What was once a wasteland is now a fertile land. When I came in 1913, I saw clean farmhouses built on the ruins and I could see that people were living happily and comfortably. The woods have retained rain and snow, and springs have sprung up in the fields that have been dry for a long time. People dug canals, and on the edge of the farm, in the maple forest, a steady stream of spring water flowed, watering the fresh mint that grew around. Little by little, the abandoned villages were rebuilt. Those who move here from cities where land is expensive bring with them youth and energy, as well as the courage to explore a new life. Along the way, I met many healthy men and women. The children's laughter has begun to waft through the lively village gatherings again and the older generation who have been living here all this time have been transformed by a comfortable new life, plus the new residents. The happy life of more than 10,000 people stems from this old man named Eliezer Buffy. Whenever I think of this old man, who, with the physical strength and perseverance of a man, turn this desert into an oasis. But when I think about what kind of perseverance and selflessness is needed to do such a thing, I think from the bottom of my heart. I feel infinite admiration for this ordinary peasant with little education. He did what only God can do. 6. Katzen Jenduo I've had cats several times at home. The ending is always missing or dead. And the third sister likes cats the most. And she often plays with cats when she comes home from school. Once, I asked for a newborn cat from next door. Gray hair, very lively. Like a snowball with dirt. It often rolls around in the sunlight in front of the porch. The third sister often took a red belt, or a rope, and dragged it back and forth in front of it, and it pounced to grab it, and then rushed over to grab it. I sat on a wicker chair and watched them smile for an hour or two, when the sun was shining warmly and my heart felt the freshness and joy of life. Then the cat somehow suddenly lost weight and refused to eat. 
and its shiny fur was dirty, and it lay under the chair in the hall all day long, refusing to come out. The third sister tried all kinds of ways to tease it, but it ignored it. We all bought a very small copper bell for its melancholy third sister, wore it with a red silk ribbon, and hung it under its neck, but it only seemed disproportionate. It was just some business, lazy, and depressed lying. One day at noon, when I came back from the compilation office, the third sister said sadly, Brother, the kitten is dead. I also felt a wisp of bitterness in my heart, and I felt pity for the little couple who had been with me for the past two months. It doesn't matter. I'll ask for another one for you elsewhere. A few days later, the second sister came back from her uncle's house in Hongku, and she said that her uncle had three or four kittens there, which were very interesting and were about to be given to others. The third sister encouraged her to fetch one for Sunday, but when her mother returned, she brought a yellow kitten with her. Immediately, part of the attention of the third sister was attracted by the yellow kitten. This kitten is more interesting and lively than the first one. It runs around the garden, climbs trees, and sometimes pounces on butterflies as they pass by peacefully. It seems to be too lively not afraid of people at all. Sometimes they jump from a tree to a wall and run out into the street, where they bask in the sun. We were all very worried about it, and we had to ask it several times a day, where's the kitten? Every time, I had to look for it once before I found it. The third sister often pointed at it and scolded him with a smile and said, You little cat, you have to be caught by a beggar so that you won't run around. After dinner entertainment is to watch it climb trees, hidden in the green leaves in the sunlight, as if waiting for something to be caught, picked it up, as soon as I let go. I climbed up very quickly, after two or three months. It caught a rat once, and it caught a very fat rat. And since then, it has stopped hearing nasty squeaks at night. One morning, I got up, put on my clothes and went downstairs. But I didn't see the kitten. I searched for it in the garden but I couldn't find it. There was some warning of loss in my heart, third sister. Where's the kitten? She hurried downstairs and replied. I searched for it just now, but I didn't see it. The family was scrambling to find it, but it was finally gone, sister-in-law said. I got up early in the morning to open the door, and I saw it in the hall. When I cooked it, I lost it. Everybody was not happy. It seems that a dear companion has been lost. And even Aunt Jen, who has never liked it very much, said, It's a pity. It's a pity. Such a good kitten. There was still a glimmer of hope in my heart, thinking that it had accidentally run away. You may recognize the way home at lunch. And Jen complained, I met the girl of the Zhou family next door just now. And she said that in the morning, she saw my kitten outside the door and was caught by a passerby.
So this loss confirmed that the third sister was very unhappy and grunted they saw it. Why didn't they come out to stop it? They knew that it was my family. I was also stunned and resentful. Cursing the unknown man who took away what we love since then. My family has not had a cat for a long time. On a winter morning, a very poor kitten crouched in the doorway. The coat color is white, but it's not good looking and it's skinny. It doesn't go. If we don't take it and keep it, we will at least be killed by the cold and hunger. And Jen picked it up and gave it food every day. But people don't like it very much. It's not lively and doesn't like other kittens to swim stubbornly. As if it has a natural melancholy. And even the third sister loves cats. And doesn't pay attention to it. And so, after a few months, it was still a nonchalant animal in my house, and it was getting fatter, but it was still inactive. When everyone was basking in the sun and chatting in front of the porch, it often came and crouched at the feet of its mother or third sister. The third sister sometimes teased him but was not as interested as the first kittens. One day, because of the cold night, it went under the stove, and its hair was burned off several pieces, which made it even more ugly. Spring is coming. It has become a strong cat, but it still does not change its melancholy, nor does it catch mice and spends its days lazily lying on its stomach, eating fat. At this time, my wife bought a pair of yellow hibiscus birds and hung them in front of the porch, calling them very well. His wife often told Aunt Jen to change the water and bird food and wash the cage, the white cat also seemed to pay special attention to the pair of yellow birds, and often jumped on the table and stared at the birdcage. The wife said, Aunt Jen, pay attention to the cat. It will eat birds. So Aunt Jen ran over and caught the cat. After a while, it jumped up on the table and stared at the birdcage. One day, when I went downstairs, I heard Aunt Jen shouting. One of the birds died, and one of the legs was bitten off. The cage was covered in blood. What was it that bit it to death? I hurried down to see that a bird was dead, its feathers loose, as if it had struggled with its enemies for a long time. I was furious and exclaimed, It must be a cat. It must be a cat. And immediately went to find it. When the wife heard this, she hurried down. And when she saw the dead bird, she was very sad. And said, Who else is it not the cat that killed him? I told Aunt Jen to be careful. Aunt Jen. Why are you not careful? Aunt Jen was silent, and she couldn't have anything to defend herself. So the cat's guilt was confirmed. Everybody went to find this disgusting cat. I wanted to give it a punishment and looked for a long time. But I didn't find it. I thought it was really absconding in fear of crime. The third sister shouted upstairs. The cat is here. It lay on the terrace board basking in the sun and had a peaceful attitude. It seemed to be eating something in its mouth. And I thought it must be eating the poor bird's legs. 
and in a moment of rage, I picked up a wooden stick leaning against the door of the building, and chased after it. It screamed in sorrow, and fled to the roof tiles. I was still indignant in my heart, thinking that the punishment was not yet happy. A few days later, sister-in-law shouted downstairs, Cat! Cat! At the same time, I saw a black cat scurrying across the terrace with a yellow bird in its beak. I'm starting to think I'm wrong. I feel very sad in my heart. Really, my conscience is hurt. I don't judge and understand. So he made a judgment and wronged an animal that could not speak and plead. The thought of its unresisted evasion makes me feel that my rage, my abuse, are needles, needles that pierce my conscience. I would like to remedy my fault, but it cannot speak. How will I confess my misunderstanding to it? Two months later, our cat suddenly died on the roof of our neighbor's house my loss of it. Much sadder than the loss of the previous two cats, I'll never have a chance to correct my mistakes. Since then, my family has never had a cat. Seven, wolf, two, a slaughter returns late, and the meat in the burden is exhausted. There are two wolves on the way, and they travel far away. Slaughter fear, cast bones, a wolf has a bone, and the wolf still follows, race render, the wolf stops and the wolf arrives again, the bones are gone, and the two wolves are the same, to die embarrassed. I am afraid that before and after being affected by its enemies, there is a wheat field, and the owner of the farm accumulates his salary, and he is covered into a mound, to nigh leaned under it, holding a knife in his shoulders, the wolves did not dare to move forward, and they looked at each other, when he was young, a wolf went away, and one of his dogs sat in front, for a long time, the eyes were like blindness. The slaughter was so violent that he slashed the wolf's head with a knife and killed him several times. Fen wants to go. After turning his eyes to accumulate salary, a wolf hole in it, intending to tunnel in order to attack it, the body is half in, and the tail of the dew is stopped. Tuzi cut off his shares and killed him. Before the enlightenment, the wolf pretended to sleep to lure the enemy. The wolf is also ruthless, and the two are killed in an instant. And the deceit of the beast is so great. Eight Memories of Mr. Luzan, excerpt Zhao Hong. Mr. Luzan's laughter is clear. From the joy of his heart, if someone said something ridiculous, Mr. Lu Zhang couldn't even hold the cigarette when he laughed, and often coughed with laughter. Mr. Lu Zhang walks very lightly. In particular, what others remember clearly is that he just grabbed his hat and buttoned it on his head, and at the same time his left leg stretched out, as if he was desperate to walk, as a guest at Mr. Lu Zan's house. At first, it took about an hour to come to Hong Ku from the French concession to take the tram, so the number of visits at that time was relatively small. I remember talking about it in the middle of the night. There was no tram after 12 o'clock, but I don't know what it was said that day. 
But when I got to a paragraph, I looked at the round clock on the small lawn table next to it, and it was half past eleven, and at eleven forty five o'clock, and the tram was gone. Anyway, it's twelve o'clock, and the tram is gone. So let's sit for a while, Mr. Zhu persuaded. Mr. Luzon seemed to have fantasized after listening to what was said, and settled down with an ivory cigarette holder in thought. After one o'clock, it was Mr. Zhu who sent me and other friends out. It was raining lightly outside, and the lights in the alley were completely extinguished. Mr. Luzon told Mr. Zhu to let him go back by car, and he must ask Mr. Zhu to pay for it and live on North Sichuan Road in the future, so that he will come to the mainland new village every night after dinner. When it is windy and rainy, there is almost no interruption. Mr. Lu Zan likes northern rice very much, and he likes to eat fried things, and he likes to eat hard things. Even when he was sick later, he didn't eat milk very much. The chicken soup was brought to the side and scooped with a spoon or two. And it was okay. One day I made an appointment to make dumplings to eat, but I still lived in the French concession, so I brought foreign sauerkraut and beef ground in a meat grinder. Standing at the square table at the back of the living room, Mr. Zhu wrapped up the baby boy and made a fuss, and after a while. He took the noodles pressed into round cakes, and he said that he made a boat and sent it to our eyes. We didn't look at him, and he turned around and made a chick again. And Mr. Zhu and I didn't look at it, and tried to avoid praising him, because if he did, I was afraid that he would do it even harder. After the living room, it was dark before dusk, and I felt a slight chill on my back, knowing that my clothes were not enough. But I didn't add clothes for the sake of being busy. When the dumplings are finished, see that the number is not much. Only then did I know that Mr. Zhu, we talked too much and missed work. How did Mr. Zhu leave home? How did he go to Tianjin to study? How he became a tutor when he was studying at the Women's Normal University? The description of her going to the tutor exam is very interesting. Only one is taken, but after dozens of exams, it is difficult for her to be elected. Counting on a little compensation for tuition, winter is coming, and it is cold in Beiping. The house is far away from the school. In addition to the car money, if you have a cold or flu, you have to take out the money to buy aspirin by yourself, and the monthly salary of. Ten yuans has to run from Sikkim to Dongtan. The dumplings are cooked, and as soon as you go up the stairs, I heard the laughter of Mr. Lu Zan upstairs, and rushed down the stairs. And it turned out that a few friends were also talking upstairs. The day was a good meal. Later, we made lake zygotes. I made hinged leaf cakes again, and as soon as I proposed it, Mr. Lu Zhang would definitely agree. But I didn't do it well. 
but Mr. Luzon still held chopsticks at the dinner table and asked Mr. Zhu, Shall I eat a few more? Because Mr. Luzon's stomach is not very good, he must take one or two stomach pills of spleen semi after every meal. One afternoon, Mr. Luzon was proofreading Kukibai's The Forest on the Sea. And as soon as I walked into the bedroom, from the round swivel chair, Mr. Luzon turned to me and stood up slightly, long time no see, long time no see, he nodded to me as he spoke, didn't I just come here? How could it be that I haven't seen you for a long time that Mr. Joe forgot the time I came in the morning? But I also come every day. Have you forgotten everything? Mr. Joe turned around and sat on the recliner before laughing to himself. He was joking in the rainy season. There are few sunny days. One morning just cleared. I was very happy. I went to Mr. Luzon's house, ran upstairs and gasped. Mr. Luzon said, come, I said, come. I couldn't even drink the tea when I was panting. So Mr. Luzon asked me, is there something wrong? I said, it's clear. The sun is out, Mr. Zhu and Mr. Luzon both smiled. A kind of smile that shows his heart for breaking through the melancholy mood young people write letters that are too sloppy. And Mr. Luzon deeply hates them, words don't have to be well written. But it has to be seen that young people are too busy right now. He hurriedly finished writing it himself and others couldn't understand it after reading it three or five times. And he didn't care how much work it took. Anyway, it's not his intention. It's not good. But he still read every letter from a young man from a different corner. And when his eyes were not good, he put on his glasses and looked at it. I often see the time in the middle of the night Mr. Luzon's original manuscript, in a fried freighter shop on Ladu Road, where fried dough sticks are wrapped. I got one, which is the original manuscript of the translation of Dead Souls. I wrote to Mr. Luzon and told Mr. Luzon, who didn't think it was unusual. Mr. Zhu was very angry. The proofs of Mr. Luzon's books are used to rub the table or do something. Guests are invited to eat at home. Halfway through the meal, Mr. Luzon turned around and brought the proofs for everyone to share with the guests and take a look at them. Mr. Luzon said, Wipe it. Take the chicken to eat. Your hands are tired. I went to the bathroom. And there was proof paper over there. Mr. Zhu was busy from morning to evening downstairs with guests. While still holding woolen yarn in his hands. Otherwise, while talking. He stood up and plucked the dried leaves from the flowers in the pot with his hands. Every time Mr. Zhu sends a guest, he has to send it to the door downstairs, open the door for the guest, and the guest walks out and gently closes the door before going upstairs. When guests come, they have to go to the street to buy fish or chickens. After buying it, I have to go to work in the kitchen. Mr. Luzon wanted to send a letter temporarily. 
So Mr. Zhu had to change his leather shoes and go to the post office or the mailbox next to the mainland new village. On a rainy day, Mr. Zhu put up an umbrella. Mr. Zhu is busy, and Mr. Zhu's smile is pleasant. But his hair is a little gray. Go to the movies at night. There is only one car in the garage on Scott Road. Mr. Lu Zan must not sit down, and he will let us sit, Mr. Zhu. Mrs. Zhou Ji Anren, Hai Ying, the three sons-in-law of Mr. Zhou Ji Anren, we got in the car, Mr. Lu Zan and Mr. Zhou Ji Anren. There were one or two other friends in the back after watching the movie. They only called a car, and Mr. Lu Zhang refused to sit down. So Mr. Zhou Ji Anren's family sat and left first. Mr. Lu Zhang walked next to Haying and crossed the bridge of Suzhou Creek to wait for the tram. After waiting for twenty or thirty minutes, the tram has not come. Mr. Lu Zan sat on the stone fence by the bridge by the iron railing along the Suzhou Creek, took out a cigarette, installed the cigarette holder, and smoked leisurely. The sea baby ran back and forth restlessly. Mr. Lu Zan also beckoned him to sit side by side with him. And Mr. Lu Zan sat there like a quiet old man in the countryside. Mr. Lu Zan's rest. Do not listen to the gramophone. Do not go out for a walk. Mr. Lu Zan himself said, sitting on the chair and flipping through the book is rest. Mr. Lu Zan accompanied the guests from two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Until five o'clock, and until six o'clock, if the guests have eaten at home and have eaten, they must drink tea together, or they have just finished drinking tea and left, or they have not left and the guests come again, so they go down and accompany them until eight o'clock or ten o'clock. Often accompanied until twelve o'clock from two or three o'clock in the afternoon, accompanied until twelve o'clock at night. Such a long time. Mr. Lu Zan is sitting on the rattan recliner, constantly smoking cigarettes. As soon as the guests left, it was already the second half of the night. It was already time to sleep, but Mr. Lu Zan was about to start work. Before going to work, he closed his eyes slightly, lit a cigarette, and lay on the edge of the bed. Mr. Zhu almost fell asleep in the bed. Why did Mr. Zhu sleep so fast? Because he had to get up at six or seven o'clock the next morning to take care of the housework, he also fell asleep with the nanny on the third floor. At this time, the whole building was silent, and there was no sound outside the window. Mr. Lu Zan stood up and sat at the desk. I started to write articles under the green lamp when Mr. Zhu said that the rooster crowed. Mr. Lu Zhang was still sitting, and the cars on the street were beeping. But Mr. Lu Zhang was still sitting. Sometimes Mr. Zhu wakes up and looks at the glass window by Sasa. The lights don't seem to be bright. And Mr. Lu Zan's back is not as dark as it is at night. Mr. Lu Zan's back is gray black. Still sitting there, everyone got up, and Mr. Lu Zan fell asleep. Hai Ying came down from the third floor, carrying a school bag. The nanny sent him to school. 
and passed in front of Mr. Luzan's door. The nanny always told him, walk lightly, walk lightly, as soon as Mr. Luzan fell asleep. The sun rose, the sun shone brightly on the people in the courtyard. Mr. Luzan's desk is neat and tidy. The finished essay is pressed under the book, and the brush stands on the back of a small porcelain fired turtle. A pair of slippers stopped under the bed, and Mr. Luzan fell asleep next to the pillow. The dish called from the Fujian restaurant has a bowl of meatballs made of fish. As soon as he ate it, he said that it was not fresh, and Mr. Zhu didn't believe it, and no one else believed it, because some of the balls are fresh, some are not, and what others eat in their mouths happens to have no change in taste. Mr. Zhu gave another sea baby to it. But it was not good. And he shouted again. Others didn't pay attention. And Mr. Luzan took the sea baby dish and tasted it. Sure enough, it's not new, Mr. Luzan said. He must have a reason for saying that it is not new. And it is not right to erase it without checking it. Later, when I thought about it, I talked to Mr. Zhu privately, and Mr. Zhu said Mr. Zhou's life, it's really a little thing that we can't learn. Mr. Lu Zhang also wrapped a paper bag to be neat, and often took the books to be sent, and Mr. Lu Zhang took them from Mr. Zhu's hand and wrapped them himself. Mr. Zhu had wrapped it so well, and Mr. Lu Zhang had to do it himself. Mr. Lu Zhang wrapped the school book and tied it with a thin rope. The bag was square, and even a corner was not allowed to be crooked or flattened. Then I picked up the scissors and cut the end of the rope that tied the book neatly. Even the paper that wrapped this book was not new. It was all left behind after buying something on the street. Mr. Zhu came back from the street and opened the things he bought, folded the craft paper that wrapped the things, and wrapped the small string around it. It should also be untied at hand, ready to be used at any time and convenient at any time, Mr. Luza must rest, said Dr. Sudo, but Mr. Luza not only did not rest, and I thought more about what I had to do, as if I had to do it immediately, proofreading the proofs of the forests of the sea, printing the paintings of Kohuik, and translating the lower part of dead souls. These all started together, and the 30-year collection that is, the complete works of Lu Zhang was calculated. Mr. Lu Zhang felt that his health was not good, so he had no time to pay attention to his body, so he had to do more and do it quickly. At that time, everyone didn't understand the meaning, and they thought that Mr. Lu Zan didn't take a break, but later read the article of Mr. Lu Zan's death. Mr. Lu Zan knows that his health is not enough to work, and it doesn't matter if he dies, as long as he leaves more to mankind. Mr. Lu Zhang is like this. Soon both German and Japanese dictionaries were on the desk, and Gogol's dead souls began to be translated again. 9. A Chen and the Classic of Mountains and Seas, Lu Zhang, Long Mother, 
As I have already said, it was a female worker who had always led me, and to put it mildly, it was my nanny, my mother and many other people called her that, and it seemed a little polite, only her grandmother called her Ao Cheng. I usually call her grandma, and I don't even use the word long. But when I hate her, for example, when I know that it was her who murdered my hidden mouse, I call her Ao Cheng. We don't have a long surname there. She was born yellow. Fat and short is not an adjective. It's not her name. I remember she said it herself. What kind of girl her name is? What a girl. I have forgotten now. In short, not the eldest girl. I finally don't know what her surname is. And I remember that she also told me the origin of this name, before before. There was a female worker in my family, who was born very tall, and this is Zen Ao Chen. Then she went back. My girl came to fill her gap. But everyone didn't change her words because they were used to it. So she became the eldest mother from then on. Although it is not a good thing to talk about the length of people behind their backs. But if I had to tell the truth, I would have to say, I don't really admire her. The most annoying thing is that I often like to be careful and whisper something to people, and a second finger up. Shake up and down in the air or point the tip of your opponent's or your nose. There was a little turmoil in my family. And somehow I always suspected that it had something to do with this cha 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 and forbade me to go about or pull out a single grass. Turning over a rock said I was naughty and was going to tell my mother. In the summer, when she went to sleep, she stretched out her feet and hands again, and put a big word in the middle of the bed, so that I had no room to turn over. The mat that had been sleeping in a corner for a long time was already so hot again, push her, and do not move, and call her, and do not smell. The eldest mother is so fat. She must be very afraid of the heat and the sleeping appearance at night. I am afraid that it will not be very good. My mother asked her this question after hearing my complaints. I also knew that meant asking her to give me more empty seats. She didn't speak, but at night, when I woke up so hot, but I still saw a big word on the bed, and one arm was still resting on my neck, I think it's really unthinkable, but she knows many rules. It's probably the happiest time of the year that I'm impatient about, and it's Chinese New Year's Eve, after the resignation. Get the New Year's money from the elders, wrap it in red paper, put it next to the pillow, and use it at will as long as it takes one night. Sleeping on the pillow and looking at the red envelope, I thought of the small drums, knives and guns, clay figures, sugar bodhisattvas and that I bought tomorrow. However, she came in and placed another fortune orange on the head of the bed. Brother, you remember, she said very solemnly, Tomorrow is the first day of the first month. And when you open your eyes in the morning, the first thing you have to say to me is, Grandma, congratulations. 
Don't say anything else. I still have to eat a little food tangerine. She picked up the orange again and shook it twice in front of my eyes. Then, all year round, go with the flow in my dream. I also remember New Year's Day, and I woke up very early the next day. And when I woke up, I had to sit up. She immediately stretched out her arm and held me down. When I looked at her in amazement, I saw her looking at me anxiously. She shook my shoulders as if she had asked again. I suddenly remembered Grandma. Congratulations, 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 everyone. How clever it is. She laughed as if she were very happy and at the same time shoved something cold into my mouth, I was taken aback. And then I suddenly remembered. This is the so-called ordeal of food tangerines New Year's Day, and it has finally been endured and can get out of bed to play. She taught me many more truths, such as saying that when a person dies, he should not say that he is dead, but he must say old. You should not go into the house where you have given birth. You must pick up the rice when it falls on the ground, and it is best to eat it. And under the bamboo pole used to dry your pants, you must not get through the, besides, now it's mostly forgotten. Only the strange rituals of New Year's Day are remembered most clearly. In short, they are all trivial things, and I still feel very troublesome when I think about them. However, there was a time when I had unprecedented respect for her. She used to tell me about long hair. Her so-called long-haired people were not only Hongshu's entire army, but also all the bandits and robbers who came later. But except for the revolutionary party, because there was no one at that time, she said that the long hair was terrible. They couldn't understand what they said. And when she said that when Chen Ma went to the city, my family had all fled to the seaside, leaving only a porter and an old cook to watch over the house. Later, the long hair really came in the door. Then the old woman called them kings. It is said that to long hair, he should call, tell him about his hunger. Long hair smiled and said, Then I'll eat this thing for you, and threw a round thing over. And with a little pigtail is the head of the porter. The old mother who cooked rice was shocked from then on. And when she mentioned it later, her face was immediately like earth. And she gently patted her chest and said, I was shocked to death. I didn't seem to be afraid, because I felt that these things had nothing to do with me. And I was not a porter, but she probably sensed it and said, a child like you. The long hairs are also to be taken captive to make small long hairs. There are also good-looking girls who will also be taken captive. Well, it doesn't matter to you. I thought she must be the safest. Neither a porter, nor a child, nor a good-looking child. Besides, there were many burn scars on her neck. Where are the words? She said solemnly, are we useless? We're going to be taken captive. When there were soldiers outside the city, the long hair told us to take off our trousers. 
The cannons that stood in rows outside the city wall could not be released, and if they were to be released, they would explode. This is really out of my imagination, and I cannot help but be surprised. I had always thought that her belly was full of troublesome etiquette. But I didn't expect her to have such great powers. Since then, I have had a special respect for her, which seems to be unfathomable. Occupying the whole bed is of course excusable, but I should back down this respect, although it also gradually faded, disappeared completely. Probably after knowing that she had murdered my hermit, at that time, he questioned her very seriously and called her a long person in person. I don't think I'm really a little long hair. I don't go to see the city. I don't set off artillery, and I'm not afraid of shelling. What am I afraid of her? But when I mourned the recluse, when I took revenge on it, I was longing for the drawing classic of mountains and seas again. This longing was aroused by a distant uncle. He is a chubby, kind old man who loves to plant a little flowers and trees. For example. There are also very rare lantana flowers that are said to have been brought back from the north. His wife, on the contrary, was inexplicable, and once rested the bamboo pole for drying clothes on the branches of Julan. When the branch broke, he cursed indignantly. Dead body. This old man was a lonely man. And because he had no one to talk to, he loved to associate with the children. And sometimes he simply called us little friends in the house where we live together. Only he has a lot of books and is special. Naturally, there are art making and trial poems, but I have only seen Lujis Mang poems in his study. And there are many books with very good names. One of my favorite things to look at at that time was flower glasses with a lot of pictures on it. He told me that there was once a drawing of the classic of mountains and seas, which depicted a beast with a human face, a nine-headed snake, a three-legged bird. And a man with wings, the monster that doesn't have a head and uses two breasts as eyes. But unfortunately, I don't know where to put it now. I'd love to look at such a picture, but I'm too embarrassed to force him to look for it. He's very lazy, as others. No one will truly answer that I still have a few hundred dollars in New Year's money, and there is no good opportunity to buy it. The street where I bought books was far away from my house, and I could only go once a year during the New Year. The doors of both bookstores were tightly closed, and there was nothing to play with. But as soon as I sat down, I remembered the illustrated classic of mountains and seas. Probably too much to forget. Even A Chen came to ask what the classic of mountains and seas was about, which I had never told her, and I knew that she was not a scholar, and it was useless to say it. But since I came to ask, I told her everything. After more than ten days or a month, I still remember that four or five days after she went home from leave, she came back in a new blue shirt. And as soon as we met, 
She handed me a bag of books and said happily, Brother, I seem to have encountered a thunderbolt, and all of them were shaken, and I quickly went to take it, and opened the paper bag, which were for small books, and I flipped them slightly, and the beast with a human face, the nine-headed serpent was indeed included. This gave me a new respect for what others would not or could not do. But she could succeed, indeed. She has great divine powers, the resentment of murdering the hermit. These four books have been completely wiped out and they are the first and most beloved books I have ever acquired. The appearance of the book is still in front of me, but judging from the appearance that is still in front of you, but it is a very clumsy notebook with very clumsy engravings. The paper is very yellow, and the images are very bad, and even the animals are almost all straight, and even the eyes of the animals are rectangular, but that's my most beloved book. It does look like a beast with a human face, a nine-headed snake, a one-legged cow, a bag-like emperor, and a head that takes the milk as the eye, the umbilicus as the mouth, and dances with relatives. Since then, I have collected more books on drawings. So there are lithographs of Arya Yintu and Mao's poems. And there are Dian Shijai Kong paintings and poetry and painting boat. The classic of mountains and seas also bought another lithograph. And each volume has a picture of praise. The green calligraphy is red, much more delicate than the woodcut. This one was still there until the year before last, and it was a miniature of how Yixing. I can't remember when I lost the woodcut, my babysitter, the eldest mother, that is, A Chen, passed away from this world and it has been about 30 years, I finally didn't know her name, her experience, only that there was a stepson, and she was about a widow of a young widow, kind, dark mother earth, may her soul rest forever in your bosom, Chen, the bitterest and the happiest, Lian Kisha, what is the hardest thing in life? Is it poor, no frustrated, no is it old, dead, not at all. I said that the most bitter thing in life is not to suffer from carrying an unfulfilled responsibility. If a man is content, though he is poor, if he is not bitter, if he is able to settle down not much hope, although he is disappointed, if he is not bitter, if old age and death are inevitable things in life, people who have attained the view are very ordinary. And it is not bitter, it is only a matter of mortal life in the world for one day. If the things that should be done are not done, it is like having thousands of pounds of heavy burden on your shoulders. Why is there no more suffering? Because if you are condemned by that conscience, you have nowhere to flee. The promiser has not done a thing. The money owed to a man has not been repaid. And the favor received has not been repaid. I have offended a person and have not apologized so that even this person hardly dares to see him. And even if I do not see his face, in my sleep and dreams, it is like his shadow hunting me. Why? 
because I feel sorry for him. This is true not only for a person, but also for the family, for society, for the country, and even for oneself, to all who I have received from him. I have a duty to him for what I ought to do, and what my power can do. I have a duty to do it, whatever I have decided to do for myself. It is the current self and the future self that make a contract. That is, to add a layer of responsibility to oneself, with this responsibility, the conscience is always overwatched. If you do not fulfill your responsibilities in one day, you will live in the bitter days of the night, and if you do not fulfill your responsibilities in your life, you will die and go to the grave with your pain. This kind of pain is not comparable to ordinary poverty and old death. It can be solved by attaining the view of the solution. So I say that there is no pain in life. And if there is pain, of course, there is nothing worse than this. Looking back, what's the happiest thing? Natural responsibility is over. It is the first pleasure in life. As the old saying goes, relieved. And as the saying goes, a stone in the heart falls to the ground. At this time, the kind of relaxation and happiness that cannot be described in words, the greater the responsibility. The longer the days of responsibility are and the longer the responsibility is over, the sea and the sky are wide, and the heart is at ease and the happiness will be multiplied several times. Life must know that there are responsible sufferings. Only then can we know that the cycle of happiness and happiness with responsibility is a kind of fun in this dynamic world. But he did not fulfill his responsibilities and was rebuked by his conscience. And these sufferings were all self-inflicted. As soon as I flipped over, if you are responsible everywhere, you will be happy everywhere. And if you are responsible at all times, you will be happy all the time. The right to be happy is up to you. Confucius said, There is no self-satisfaction without entry which is precisely this effect. But why did Mencius say again? For the more sage and heroic he is, the greater the responsibility. And he always has to carry these kinds of responsibilities on his shoulders. And there is never a time to let go of the burden on his shoulders, Zen Tzu also said. The responsibility is heavy and the road is far away, and death is gone, is it not far away? The people with lofty ideals who are worried about the people and the country, the saints and Buddhas are compassionate and compassionate. Even if he feels pain all his life, he can do it. But he was there every day to do his duty. He was there every day and was really happy in suffering. So he was still happy, not bitter. Someone said, Since this suffering is born from responsibility, if I remove my responsibility, will there not be no suffering forever? This is not the case. The responsibility is not to be relieved, not to be discharged. If life can always be like a two or three year old child, there is no responsibility. Then there is no suffering. 
when it grows up, the responsibility naturally falls on your shoulders. How can you avoid it? There is only a big difference. If you fulfill a big responsibility, you will have great happiness. And if you fulfill a small responsibility, you will have a small happiness. If you want to hide, you will throw yourself into the sea of misery. Can never be lifted 11. If life deceives you, Pushkin, if life deceives you, don't be sad, don't be anxious, come in a gloomy day, believe it. Happy days will come the heart is always yearning for the future, now it's often melancholy, everything is fleeting, everything will pass, and what passes will become a kind nostalgia. 12. The Great Tragedy, Zweig on January 16, 1912, Scott and his party set off early in the morning and set off earlier than usual. In order to see the incomparably beautiful secret earlier, I anxiously got them out of my sleeping bag early. By noon, the five persevering men had covered 14 kilometers. They walked enthusiastically on the deserted white snowfields, because it was no longer possible to reach their destination, and the decisive deeds for humanity were almost complete. But suddenly, one of his companions, Powers, became uneasy, his eyes were fixed on a small black dot in the endless snow. He did not dare to express his conjectures. Someone may have set up a signpost here, but now everyone else has thought of it horribly. Their hearts trembled, but they just tried to comfort themselves as much as possible. Just as Robinson tried to see the footprints of strangers on a desert island as his own, they already knew in their hearts. The Norwegians, led by Amundsen, had already been here before them, and it wasn't long before they found a ski pole in the snow with a black flag tied to it. Surrounded by remnants of others having set foot in the camp, traces of skis and tracks of many dogs, in the face of this harsh truth, there is no need to doubt it, Amundsen has set up camp here. The South Pole of the Earth, which has not been visited by people for thousands of years, or has never been seen by the world since ancient times, has been discovered in a very short period of time, that is, twice in a month. This is the most incredible thing in human history that has never been heard of, and they were precisely the second group to arrive, who were only a month late, although millions of months have passed in the past. But now the month that was late seemed too late and too late for humans. The first one to arrive had everything and the second one was nothing, all efforts were in vain. The hope of weeks, months, and years of hard work seems ridiculous, and it can be described as madness, after a lot of hardships, endless pain and troubles, sleeping in the open air. What is it all for? It's not for these dreams. But now it's all over, Scott wrote in his diary, tears welled up in their eyes. Despite their exhaustion, they couldn't sleep that night. They lost hope as if they had been sentenced, and continued to walk the last journey to the extreme. And what they had thought was to rush there with cheers, 
None of them wanted to comfort others, but silently dragged their own steps forward. On January 18th, Admiral Scott and his four companions reached the Pole, and since he was no longer the first to arrive here, everything here did not make him feel very dazzling. He only looked at this sad place with indifferent eyes, and there was nothing to be seen here no different from the creepy monotony of the previous days. That's all Robert Falcon Scott has to say about the poles. And the only unusual thing they found there was not caused by nature, but by rivals who were in contention. It was Amundsen's tent flying the Norwegian flag and the Norwegian flag was proudly hunting over the fortress that had been breached by humans. Its occupants also left a letter here, waiting for the arrival of this unknown second number. He believed that this second number would surely follow him, so he asked him to bring the letter to King Haakon of Norway. Scott accepted the task, and he was to faithfully carry out this most ruthless duty, to testify before the world about the accomplishments of another man. And this is exactly what he himself is passionate about, and they are unhappy to plant the British flag next to Amundsen's victory banner a belated flag of the United Kingdom, and left the place that had failed their ambitions, a bitter cold wind blew behind them, with foreboding. Scott wrote in his diary, The way back made me feel very terrible. The journey back is ten times more dangerous. On the way to the pole, they only need to follow the guidance of the compass, and now they must also follow their original footsteps. During the course of a few weeks' trip, care must be taken not to deviate from their original footprints so as not to miss the preset storage point where their food is stored. Clothes and gallons of kerosene condensed with heat, but the snow covered their eyes, making them worry at every step, because if they deviated from the direction, they missed the storage point. It's tantamount to going straight to death and they don't have the energy they had when they first came. Because the chemical energy contained in the abundant nutrition and the warm barracks of the Antarctic house gave them strength at that time. They have superhuman strength when they think that the expedition they are undertaking is the immortal cause of humanity, and now, they're just trying to keep their skin from being damaged. Fight for the survival of your own dying body, and for the sake of returning home without any glory, in the depths of their hearts, they are more afraid of going home than they are looking forward to going home. Reading the diary for those days, it was terrible. The weather was getting worse, and the cold season came earlier than usual. The snow under their soles turned from soft to hard, forming a thick layer of ice. Stepping on them was like stepping on a triangular spike, sticking to their shoes with every step, and the biting cold engulfed their already exhausted bodies. They often cower for days on end, going the wrong way. Whenever they arrived at a storage point, they were a little happy, and the flame of faith flashed back between the lines of the diary. In the gloomy loneliness, 
There are always only a few people walking. Their heroism cannot but be admired. And there is no one who can best prove this more than Dr. Wilson, who was in charge of scientific research. And when he was only an inch away from death, he is still continuing his scientific observations, dragging 16 kilograms of precious rock samples on his sled. In addition to all the necessary loads, however, man's courage has finally been gradually eroded by the great power of nature, which is cold and unforgiving, and the power accumulated over thousands of years can make it like a spirit to summon cold, freezing, snow. Storm used all of these spells that were enough to destroy people against these five reckless and daring braves. Their feet were already frozen. The ration of food is getting smaller and smaller. And you can only eat one hot meal a day. Their bodies have become very weak due to the lack of calories. One day to the horrific discovery of the companions. Evans, the strongest of them all, suddenly went insane. He stood aside and didn't go. He kept complaining about their sufferings, some of them real, some of them hallucinating. From his incoherent words, they finally understood. What to do to this miserable man who has gone mad because of a fall or because of great pain? Abandon him on this lifeless ice field, no but on the other hand. Again, they must rush to the next storage point without hesitation. It was not clear from the diary what Scott was planning to do. At one o'clock in the night of February 17th, on the day of the death of the unfortunate British naval sergeant, they had just walked to the slaughterhouse camp to rediscover the pony they had slaughtered last month and had a heartier meal for the first time. Now only four people continue walking, but disaster strikes again. The next storage site brings new pain and disappointment. There is too little kerosene stored here. They must use the most essential fuel wisely. And they must conserve as much heat as possible. Which is the only weapon they have against the cold, icy night. Surrounded by a howling blizzard. They timidly opened their eyes and could not sleep. And they barely had the strength to turn the soles of their felt shoes over. But they must keep dragging their bodies on. T in the middle of them was already walking with a toe that had been frozen. And the wind was blowing harder than ever on March 2nd. They arrived at the next storage point, but again made them feel terrible despair. There's so little fuel there, and now they're panicking, from the diary. One can perceive how Scott tried to hide his fears, but from the forced comedium, there were still desperate screams that it would not work to go on like this. Or God forbid, we can't stand this fatigue any longer, or our play was about to end tragically. And at last there was a terrible confession, may God bless us. However, they still dragged their tired bodies and gritted their teeth, and continued to walk forward in despair, and walked Oats became more and more unable to walk, becoming more and more a burden to his friends rather than a helper. One day at noon, 
When the temperature reached minus 40 degrees Celsius, they had to slow down their walk, and the unfortunate not only felt, but also knew in his heart that if he continued like this, he would bring bad luck to his friends. Making his final preparations, he asked Wilson, who was in charge of scientific research, for ten tablets of morphine in order to speed himself up if necessary. They accompanied the patient for another difficult day's journey. Then the unfortunate man himself asked them to keep him in his sleeping bag, separating his fate from theirs, but they categorically rejected the idea, although they all knew that this would undoubtedly ease the burden on everyone. So the patient had to stagger on his frostbitten legs for several kilometers until he reached the camp where he was staying overnight. He slept with them until he woke up early the next morning, and they looked out to see a roaring blizzard outside. Oz suddenly stood up and said to his friends, I'm going to go outside. It might have been a little longer, and the rest of the people couldn't help but shudder. Everyone knows what it means to go outside for a walk in this weather, but no one dared to say a word to stop him. None of them dared to stretch out their hands to shake him goodbye, but they all felt with all Lawrence Oates. The cavalry captain of the British Royal Guard was walking towards death like a hero and now only three tired, weak men dragged their steps through the vast. The ice and snow wasteland was as hard as iron, and they were so tired that they no longer had any hope, but they relied on their confused intuition to support their bodies and stagger. The weather is getting more and more terrible. At every storage point they were greeted by a new despair, as if deliberately playing tricks on them, leaving only a small amount of kerosene, that is, heat, on 21 March. They were only 20 kilometers away from their next storage site. But the blizzard blew so fiercely that it seemed to kill them and they couldn't leave the tent, every night they hoped to reach their destination the next day. But the next day, in addition to eating one day's rations, one can only pin hope on the second tomorrow. They had run out of fuel, and the thermometer was pointing at minus 40 degrees Celsius, any hope is dashed. They now have to choose between two ways to die, starve to death or freeze to death, surrounded by a white primeval world. Three men struggled against their doomed death for eight days in a small tent. On March 29th, knowing that no miracle would ever save them again, they decided not to walk towards doom but to proudly wait for death in their tents. No matter what kind of pain they had to endure, they climbed into their sleeping bags, but they never lamented to the world the suffering they had endured. A ferocious blizzard attacked the thin tent like a madman, and death was creeping in, and at such moments, Admiral Scott recalled everything that had to do with him, because it is only in this extreme silence that has never been broken by the voice of a human voice that he will be tragically aware of his intimate friendship with his motherland and for all mankind, but in this snowy desert, 
There is only a mirage in the heart, which summons the images of all those who have been associated with him through love, loyalty, and friendship, to whom he leaves words. Admiral Scott wrote letters to all the people he loved with his frozen fingers as he was dying. Admiral Scott's diary was kept until the last breath of his life. Remember until his fingers were completely frozen, and the pen slid off his stiff hand. He hoped that in the future someone would find these diaries next to his body, which would prove his courage and that of the British nation. It was this hope that allowed him to write the diary with superhuman perseverance until the last moment, a wish that he wrote with his already frostbitten fingers. Please send this diary to my wife. But he then sadly and resolutely crossed out the words my wife and added the terrible my widow to them. The friends who lived in the wooden houses on the base waited for weeks, at first with confidence, then with some apprehension, and finally with more and more restlessness. Twice they sent rescue teams to pick them up, but bad weather kept them back until the arrival of spring in Antarctica. And on October 29th, an expedition set out to at least find the bodies of the heroes. When they arrived at the tent on November 12th, they found the bodies of the heroes frozen in their sleeping bags, and the dead Scott was still holding Wilson like a brother. They found the letters and documents. And a stone tomb was built for the heroes who died tragically, and a simple black cross was erected on top of the tomb covered with snow in the National Church of England. The king knelt down to pay tribute to these heroes, although a man destroys himself in the struggle against invincible doom. His soul is incomparably nobler. All this is the greatest tragedy of all times.